Hey everybody, I'm back. Uh, sorry about the late posting and everything. Uh, long story short, as you saw at the end of the Medea movie, I wasn't in any good condition, and just to make it simpler, I got worse. Really worse. So I had no way to upload any of this because I have to constantly monitor it, and I could barely get out of my bed, let alone work a laptop and <laughs> put this up here. But thankfully, I'm back in working order and here to talk to you about the wonderful movie Jigsaw. And I say wonderful only in the sense if you've never seen a Saw movie. Because while this actually is a welcoming breath of fresh air to newcomers, anyone who's seen the old movies knows exactly what tricks they're playing, what plot points they're setting up, and how the payoff is going to be in the end. The only difference is you may not exactly know like some of the characters' secrets. Some are blatantly and told right away, but there's maybe one to two that are just, yeah, didn't see that coming, but really, is, is that big of a surprise? It's like, okay, I know you did something bad, but I didn't know you did it that way. I know you're an arsonist, and I know you burned down a lot of buildings, but I never knew you burnt down a 7-Eleven. I was assuming maybe a Kroger's. Like that. So just that little minutia that means nothing. But... The actor who does uh, Jigsaw reprises his role, and he's actually alive and talking, so we're not just seeing, you know, animatronic puppet, I want to play a game. Here's the story of blah, the blah. Life is important. Here's this deadly trap to make you realize it. Fear the puppet. I now have glowing red eyes. Ah! <laughs> I'm not joking. This puppet now has glowing red eyes because suddenly that's menacing. And don't get me wrong. When you just see the eyes, it kinda is. When you see it with the full puppet, it ain't that scary. There's actually one thing I'll give this movie credit. Not a lot of jump scares. Not a lot of quick gotcha jump moments. It's actually very linear and controlled in that regard. And all the people do their jobs very well. You got the two detectives, one who's the more serious down the nature, one who's the, I'll do anything it takes to get this done. You got two doctors working the autopsy, and then you got your five people who are basically getting, um, <laughs> get to play the game. Not the game of life, the game of Jigsaw. And boy, no one wins in either of those games if you really think about it. <laughs> but yes, as for Jigsaw's traps, um, so most of them are actually very tame and actually very controlled. And what I mean by that is this, it's not over the top and extravagant, it's actually very simplistic. And when I get to the spoiler section here, it'll actually make a lot of sense as to why. And, like I said, taking that bit to the side. So, yeah, if you've never seen a Jigsaw movie, or Saw movie, I should say, I shouldn't be saying Jigsaw, if you've never seen one of those movies, it's not a bad one to watch. Not one you have to see in theaters, I promise you that. But if you've never seen that stuff and you're always curious what all the hype is about and what made it the way it is and why people might like it, it's got the best. It's kind of like the greatest hits list. Except the greatest hits are the hits to mysteries, so you can kind of guess, hmm. It's like the whole, you know, someone shoots themselves and all of a sudden you, th you know, wait a minute, wait, there's no exit wound in that gun. You fired a blank. You ain't dead. Get up. Okay, you caught me. Yeah, like that old gambit, we can pick from a mile away. To anyone who's seen old Saw movies, you can pick these out a mile away too. But like I said, to the fresh peep, to people who've never seen it, you might be able to figure it out. If you got a bit of deductive reasoning. More so than half the people in this movie. But, if you don't, it's an enjoyable ride. It's not over the top gory, it's not a giant torture fest like the rest turn into be. All these traps actually can be won, and you know, you can figure it out relatively quickly. In fact, most of the reason these people die is because of their own stupidity and just, mm. Once again, spoiler section. So yeah, final comment before uh, we move on to the spoiler section. Uh, it's okay, it's not the greatest thing in the world. If you want to watch it, my recommendation, Netflix, Redbox, trust me, it'll be there. And, yeah, it's, if you're bored for Halloween, you want to watch it, go right ahead. 
Assuming you can't get a hold of any of the old school Halloween, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Puppet Master, or uh, let's see, what else would be a good one? You know, the Scream movies. I got a soft spot for those. Those are good Halloween movies. So yes, on to the spoiler section, guys. So, this movie does two time skips in a way you might think of. Because this movie takes place 10 years after the events of the first Saw movie, and also simultaneously taking place even before that. Yeah, so after Jigsaw got diagnosed, he made his first game, basically. And, as you can tell, he is just new to this. It's his first game, besides the one he did to Oh Boy. So, even though this is technically what one consider a reboot, it's still in continuity. However, it doesn't have all that over-the-top crazy backstory you need for the rest of them. Seriously, you need a flowchart to realize who is who, to the point where when someone shows up again, you need like, okay, can I get like the stats below them? Are they like a survivor? Uh, are they like one of his apprentices? Is this all a trap? Can I get something here? Because otherwise I feel like I'm missing something out. Why did that guy shoot that guy? I don't know. But this one? No. It takes place 10 years in the future, so there's no preset conditions. All the characters you see, for the most part, could and can be anything. Except for our unfortunate would-be murder victims, or those getting killed. Because this is his first game. You know they're all dead, because otherwise somebody would have said something. And they kind of put that twist at the end, when it's revealed who the killer is. And that one, I'm not going to say, you can figure it out, it takes all of like five seconds. But when it's revealed, it's like, oh, so this was his first game. Which they heavily imply in the movie, so you can put two and two together and realize, yeah, this is probably that case. Especially when the times do not sync up. Because anyone going through this stuff, a guy loses his leg. He's going to bleed out relatively quick, no matter how good you make that tourniquet, honey. And... Their deaths, like, most of them are their own fault. Because the death takes place in the beginning, and the first one who gets taken out is kind of important, so I'm not going to say him, but his is just he didn't wake up because of the buzzard and everything. So, it's actually kind of funny because CinemaSins constantly makes a joke about how everyone magically wakes up at the right moment for the time to start. So I think this actually was tying into that... Uh, because now Jigsaw now purposely knows how long to time his knockout drugs so that when someone wakes up, they wake up at the right moment. <laughs> so that way we don't have to deal with... Wait, this is all timed. Why is he still asleep? Oh, crap. Do I like going with a cattle prod and poke him? Yeah. Okay. You know, we'll fix it. We'll fix it in post. We'll fix it in post. That. And all of his traps are pretty mundane and simplistic. It's pull someone by chain into saw blades. Pull someone up by chain to hang them. Bury somebody alive, use extremely tension and garrote wire to kill someone, giant rotating blender of death, and a shotgun. It's simple. And it's actually even something you hint upon in the, when he's around, you know, in the past, because that's how he's there. Which, you know, best way to bring him back and not make it sound over the top is to do that. He's sitting there and he's just put the shotgun in front of him. One shell. Would you fire that gun at all? Anybody with common sense? The key to your victory is in this gun. Okay, I'm gonna leave now. Bye. Would you use it? I'm sorry, but anybody with an ounce of common sense would tell you, no, do not fire that gun. There's gotta be some other trap. When you take it off, giant blades will swing down and cut you off. Or when you pull the gun, it's gonna blow up in your face. Or... You know, when you pull the gun and you try to shoot, it's going to be a blank. And then the guy you think is actually, you know, who you're supposed to kill is going to walk up, laugh at you, slam the door in your face, cut the black. Because that's how most Saw movies ends. Somebody says something bad, slams door in the person's face, locking them in something, <coughs> cut the black. The only exception, I think, was Saw 4, I want to say, with the uh, glass coffin case. But that's another story in and of itself. So, it plays loose with the mythology, it does a pretty decent job, if you honestly ask me, trying to negate everything, but still trying to keep it in-universe. Though I do call shenanigans on a couple of these things, because even a half-decent detective could figure this out. Especially if you look at the old cases. 
because it plays out exactly the same. Someone's getting set up, overwhelming amount of evidence, counter overmounting amount of evidence, all red herrings. It makes sense. It really does. So, you know, anyone's read a single detective thing could figure it out. The only difference is it's not the double, triple fake out at the end. Like, oh, I'm not the killer. I'm the killer's assistant. Yeah, but I'm not the actual killer's assistant. I'm the one being controlled by the killer's assistant. And then the killer's assistant is actually the one who died back in round two. Why? I don't know. So, it's all right, guys. But like I said earlier, this is not one you need to see in theaters. It's... Honestly, the quality of it is okay, but it's not big screen. It's not big uber scare you. If you want that, my recommendation is go watch An go watch Annabelle. That'll scare the crud out of you. Go watch Get Out. Or, you know, don't watch Tyler Perry. Yeah, I still have to remind people of that, because that movie made number one at the box office. Don't see that movie. We are better human beings. We do not need to watch that schlock. And if you do choose to watch it, please, I normally don't emphasize illegally downloading stuff have someone else do it for you okay so that way I don't say you to do it because my god I st that movie was sold out why why is that movie sold out a week later I blame you guys I really do uh yeah still a little sore about that and now the rage is back so I can go all out <laughs> yes unfortunately not a lot to get out of rage in this movie and um Hopefully no raids next time. Because next time I will be reviewing Thor Ragnarok. It's probably got nothing to do with the actual comic Thor Ragnarok. So, it should be fun. Thor and Loki and Hulk. It's good enough for me. Beats a couple weeks later when I gotta go watch Justice League. <sighs> well, anyway, guys. I'll see you all next time with Thor Ragnarok. As always, this is Kevin Riley signing off, and I'll see you all next time. Later.